Closet, also known as the Jim McCarthy VoiceOvers World Headquarters Studio. This is the JMVO Weekly Primer. Please subscribe, rate, and comment via JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com forward slash podcast. This is the JMVO Weekly Primer. This is the podcast about making your life better through marinating your mind in good stuff. My name is Jim McCarthy, owner, operator, and chief bottle washer at JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. I believe that as business owners, entrepreneurs, and overall, overall, overall salespeople, <laughs> we are bombarded by negativity every day, and it's the last thing we need. If you want to see your life and business change for the better, start consuming, nurturing good stuff. It could be the people you hang out with. It could be the books you read or what you listen to <clears throat> or the water you drink. You can always subscribe via JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com forward slash podcast. Pick your poison for iPhone and Android, iTunes, Stitcher, Blueberry. We're all there. And if I'm not on a, on a platform that you're, uh, you're currently part of and you want me on it, let me know. Just uh, just reach out to me. Of course, we're sponsored by Big Dot Lighting and also Big Dot Electrical because now we're a, uh, an, a full-blown electrical company. So if you need commercial LED lighting conversions as well as electrical services, we specialize in all sorts of things. We convert all sorts of commercial facilities to energy-efficient LED lighting. And uh, the biggest thing right now that we have is the operational expense way of doing this, which we would be the LAMP plan. Lighting and maintenance partnership, very big for businesses that are open-minded. They want to make it operational, you know what I mean? Not just a CapEx, they want to, make, they want to go OpEx. Your company is sponsoring your podcast. That's right. I love that. Yeah. So when did you guys uh, become a full-blown electrical company? That happened, Recently. That happened fast. That happened fast. We did that in January. You and Tim are like on Killing fire. Killing it. You're Killing it. LAMP. I like how you're taking the, uh, right. the acronym model so you're coming in early I, I have yet to introduce you and why you're on so but hey sorry. we'll run with it that's my personality i was about to say blueberry i just had a blueberry larabar so those of you who aren't aware uh i've been friends with this gentleman for since 2008 we were talking about this before uh we've got mr rich redmond here and this is a on location multi-guest a first of its kind for this podcast and this show huh. um type of uh, episode going on here We've got Miss Sarah Cardiel. Sarah Cardiel. The real deal. The real deal Sarah Cardiel on the podcast today as well. And there's a reason why I'm having both of these people on today. Rich, I've been friends with them since 2008. We started uh, getting our relationship going. You reached out to me and you wanted, of all things, voiceover coaching. <clears throat> and I was thinking to myself, why would the this guy who's just a, you know, a fabulous in-demand you know, career drummer. What's he doing with voiceovers? You know what I mean? It's like, dude, don't you know who you play for? And I, that was my reaction, you know? But, you know, as I come to find out, you're a multifaceted, talented animal when it comes to creativity. Um, very positive and very po forward thinking. You've got a new book coming out in here in a month or two, right? Got Squeaky Doors. At, we're actually, squeaky we're, Doors. We're actually here at uh, the Casa Red, man. That's all right. And um, I guess that door needs some oil, some yeah. WD-40. Um, I do have a book coming out. Yeah, for um, for those that aren't in the know, I've, I've been doing motivational speaking for probably the last 12 years. And I speak um, uh, to, you know, Fortune 100 companies, people like Cisco and Hewlett Packard and Microsoft. I'm about to speak to a group of 300 dentists on Friday in oh, Austin, wow. Texas. There I'm really go. looking forward to that. Um, and so finally, the book that is in line with what I've been speaking on, a thing called CRASH, which is an acronym. It stands Crash. for Commitment, Relationships, Attitude, Skill, and Hunger. And the book is called Crash Course for Success, Five Ways to Supercharge Your Personal and Professional Life. Yeah. And, and you, as my pal, I remember one afternoon we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, sending each other texts and ideas about what the subtitle of the book should be. It was like five ways to make it in life, five yeah. ways to, you know, and we just, uh, we landed on how to supercharge your personal and professional life. So we're super excited about that. And that's what works, man. Yeah, man. That's what works. Um, and Sarah, the reason why we have you here is because you've been a student of riches for the past Four or five years? Almost five, uh, almost five years, yeah. Wow. So the big thing about you is the fact that you're 21? 23. 23, okay. Uh, for, since you were 19, you 
you just seem like to be that person that's all over social media, promoting your craft, promoting uh, everything that you do. You're a fourth degree black belt on top of everything. Yes. Um, talk to me a little bit. How did all this stuff begin for you? I mean, you know, did you have D? You've got like we were talking about. We just did your your podcast, Rich. Mm-hmm. So I've got a lot of fodder in my head that I wanted to bring out. And of course, this is completely unorganized, but it is what it is. We, were, we started talking about the DNA of sales and what you do, and you were completely unaware of it. <clears throat> Talk to me about the entrepreneurial DNA that you seem to have. Are you even aware of it? Thank you. <clears throat> um, not really. I've never really like thought of like all the stuff that I've done in the situations, like putting myself in those situations, like they're kind of like how entrepreneurial they are, mm-hmm. and how they've. I've never really thought about that and how i can have that i had that in me right yeah i think smart yeah, smart know, musicians are on are entrepreneurs we really are but they don't realize it a lot. see I, I they will after this podcast well they will but i mean you 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 went at your career as an entrepreneur you knew this is what you wanted to do sure you know and I'm, I'm going through right with my son right now. He's uh, 10 years old. Right. He got into the drums about seven, eight years old. I already Con- plays hot for teacher. Right. And t- and Rosanna, he was, he was huge on the halftime shuffle. Uh, I, myself, am a drummer. That's, that, got, that harkens back to our relationship. We're all from Connecticut. All, we are all from Connecticut. Are you from Connecticut? I am. What part of Connecticut? Danbury. Huh. I did not know that. Isn't that crazy? Matt wow. Is, yeah. Our buddy Matt Starr is from Connecticut. Jeff Vitti. Yeah. Tipping Chair Tavern. We love the chip, the tipping chair. Um, but you went into it coming out of Connecticut. You moved to El Paso. Mm-hmm. Your father took a job down there. Yeah. But you also did a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a foray out of drumming at some point. You got into other things, speed skating, right? You know so much about me. Dungeons and Dragons. That's right. Dungeons yeah. that you were Speed you were, skating. He was a dungeon master. It was so weird. Like, yeah. uh, like, like, like uh, speed skating is a weird sport. Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, very weird activity, um, but it was good. Yeah, I was at least I was I was showing my leadership abilities by by being a dungeon master. Well, the funny thing is, is that you know back then you look at the early childhood pictures of you, you're not the sexy beast you are now. You know, I f- am so happy that day by day I'm getting better. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like if you start if you start out as an Adonis, you have nowhere to go. It's there's it like. <laughs> Rock bottom tastes delicious. I think is how how Vaynerchuk puts it. Uh, you know, but you know, you went about it. Did you have any idea that's what you were doing at the time? And the reason why, again, I have the both of you on. Yeah, you are mirroring what he did, from what I can see. Well, Sarah and I, there's with like, I mean, Sarah could be my daughter. She's like we're 25 years apart. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But I, um, you know, some days I feel like she's more mature than I am because um, I I like her father am a man child. Right. Um, you can either you can do two things. You can either grow up or you can play the drums. But uh, but no, I've always treated it like a business. And I remember when I was, was Sarah's age, I was getting my master's degree from the University of North Texas, and I was incredibly focused about on one thing, which was to be the best, most versatile versatile drummer I could possibly be in the entire world. And I was focused on getting that gig, that big gig. So it was a very laser focus. And then as I started to, to find success in the music business, I realized I could develop other skills related to the music business, whether it be songwriting, production, um, educating, uh, be uh, creating um, events like yeah. my drummer's weekend and my drum tensives and being a better uh, public speaker, be growing into a speaker, and then cranking out some books. You know, but you had no idea you, know. you were going to do any of this when you were twelve, no, fifteen years Just old. Play the drums. I just want to play the drums. Be the best drummer you could possibly be that people <clears throat> would fight over to have in their. Band. I want to be Stuart Copeland. Is what you want? I want to be Stuart Copeland. I want to be Alex Van Halen. I want to be, yeah, you know. Apathy. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so great. You know, I just got back from playing the Bonzo Bash at, at the during the Nam show, and you know, it's so interesting. If you if you stick with something long enough, your heroes will become your colleagues. They'll become your friends. I'm Isn't backstage. That weird though, it, totally weird. I had posters of Carmine Apice on my bedroom wall, right? And I would fantasize about having the career and life and success that he had. And then I hey, see you it. would fantasize about Carmine Apice. I would I would fantasize about having that life, that rock star life, and finding that success. <laughs> You're such a man child yourself. <laughs> and and I would see him back I saw him backstage and he gave me a giant hug and he was like, What's up, MFR? You sound great. What are you up to? Holy cow. Your hair went gray since the last time I saw you. I and said, it looks great. I said, Carmine, it was gray the whole time. I was yeah. just painting it like a Lego man. But you know, 
know what they think, but at least, you know, you're honest about it and you look great with it. You know, and now, Sarah, you know, for right. you, for what you're doing, so if you don't know Sarah, follow her along. She's constantly promoting stuff. And I'm, every time I turn around on Facebook, she's like, filling in or sitting in for somebody she's at tootsies she's at the wolf den or is in it really Sun. promoting or is it just letting the pe- the people in the world that are interested in her what she's catching them up with what she is doing no but the, but that's a, that's the right? thing that's the idea yeah and it's valuable content it's fun to watch sure mm. right it's kind and of like both mm-hmm. it's kind of both like you're you're wanting to promote yourself and get yourself out there and get your videos seen by the people that you want to see them, but you're also like updating them. Like you'll have like family or you'll have like friends or like people that you've met throughout all the stuff you've gone to and everything. And it's like, hey, keep being posted. Like post everybody. I'm like, and it's to everybody. It's not like you're just zeroing in on one person. Like, hey, this is what I did. No, it's like a whole network of people that you've met and you can just do it in one shot. Your online presence is today's modern day resume. And it's a hell of a, I mean, you're, you're, you're 23 years old. And I think I met you when you were 20, 21. Correct. <clears throat> and ultimately, you have that, like I was talking about, that entrepreneurial DNA. Mm-hmm. We talked about it before we went on the air that you also have the DNA and the makings of a salesperson. Because if you want to run any business, what does it take? It takes sales. Mm-hmm. Without, without sales, there's no cash flow. There's no money. Cash is oxygen. You've already got, you know, Rich was talking about how you politely were persistent in making sure that you got on this podcast today. But in other areas, you're also politely persistent. I said, well, that's called Mm follow-up. That's just follow up. I've presented you with the thing I want, but when are we going to make it happen? When are we going to make it happen? You know, and that that kind of nonlinear follow-up is something that you're you're unaware of. Yeah. Right. I would never, like... If you had never said anything, I would have never even right. like thought of that. What yeah. is it? What does it? What does it mean yeah. when I say a lot of what you're doing is sales one on one? Does it gotta make you feel icky? Because I mean, your last name is Car Deal. You know? <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, the, I mean, some people I think can see they see salespeople as 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 slimy. Yeah. But the thing is, is that everything that we do in life is is a transaction where we're convincing people to buy into us as human beings Always. so that we can bring our, our skill set to the table. Right. And we all have our very, uh, our, our skill set that is really, it's, it's like a, it's our gift from our higher power, really. I mean, it's like our, our drumming and music talent is a gift. But your um, selling ability, it's that you either know you're a salesperson or you don't. Everybody's a salesperson at some point. Mm-hmm. The commission looks different. You know what right? I was listening to? You know what I was, you know, recently I was listening to some drummer podcasts mm-hmm. and there are so many guys that are my age that are getting off of social media and i think it's a really bad idea why are they doing it they're getting it they just they they, i think they feel like it's a drain on their time they don't necessarily see an roi on it and they also they might want a little bit of of something private in their lives that's just for them which there's elements of that that i get like I try not to post photos of the av- of my avocado worship, which is very hard because I worship the avocado, and so whenever I'm consuming an avocado, is that slang? I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna post it, man. You know. But the thing is, is I'm trying to put stuff, smart stuff, out there that other people can benefit from. But take. then again, we went down and saw Cardone in March. Yeah. And what did he say? Put everything out there. Oh my God! Live your life on it. Yeah, he's you know? yeah. There are. I mean, let's just face it. The world is is not what it was. There are no secrets anymore, and so right. there are. It's pretty. Uh, I play by those rules, kind of. You know, I mean, I nothing's private. Uh, nothing. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Nothing's it's, private. But a lot of yeah, a lot of people are getting off. Like mm-hmm. they're getting off. You know, or they're figuring out ways to modify it so they're not addicted to Instagram or on it like twenty four seven. I was on a plane the other day, and I was sitting behind, and I had a, a direct beat, like line of sight to the girl in front of me, and she was probably about 19, 20 years old. No, 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 she was of drinking age because he was looking at pictures of her herself in a bar. <laughs> and it was like the process, the thought process of watching it from afar. And, I, you know, of course, I felt creepy, but, you know, she didn't know I was doing it. But I was like looking at what she was doing. Which is even creepier. Right. <laughs> I was looking at her. <laughs> but she basically was, you know, 
she had about three or four different pictures of her and her friend and some dude and she was going through each picture and trying to figure out which one to post and then she'd go back to the post and then write a little bit more and then go back to the picture and figure out which one she wanted to do and then she'd go over to Snapchat and start doing something and she wrote about the guy who was sitting next to her I guess he was dipping his cookies in soda and she's like dude just you know took a picture of herself with the top of her head and her kind of looking like this and put it up on Snapchat talking about how the guy was dipping he's like the dude next to me on the air on the plane is dipping its cooking into my into, into the soda i mean and that, then you know then she's back to instagram and she's writing and she's looking at a picture i was just like oh my gosh this is fascinating i literally probably sat there for 20 minutes just watching now that's crazy like I, my, my my game is way more efficient like i know that that photo is going to work it, we all look good in it everyone's going to be happy boom yeah. caption loaded up done repeat on twitter facebook Done. There's my post for the morning, and then I probably do one in, in the afternoon or the evening. It's a, it's a, that's it's efficient. A, it's getting it's the loudest person in the room. They see you all the time. In the beginning, when you were posting on YouTube all the time, you used to get a lot of you know people who encouraged it and were cheering you on. And at the same time, you knew you were doing something right because people would start coming out of the woodwork and they were hating on you. Yeah, if you have haters, you're doing the right thing. You know, it's so interesting. You I was, have haters yet? Do you have haters? Anyone that's like you're gonna get them. That leaves negative uh, things on your... Well, I've had a couple. Somebody, some I forgot what they wrote, and I wrote, thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, take the high road. Take the high road always. It'll make them even more mad. Move your mic down a little bit if you could. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. You're speaking to the element. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just like over here. There you go. See, <laughs> so going from social media, like what you guys are talking about, I didn't have any social media until I went to Rich's camp, and I, I was introduced to J.C. Clifford, and he was like, do you have any social media? I'm like, I wasn't really like into it, and I never had one, and he's like, you got to get one. Like, you don't have to post about your whole, like everything you do, like, oh, I'm brushing my teeth, or I'm over here. <laughs> Please don't. Or like, oh, look at this. I just pet the dog and uh, like all this other stuff. He's like, use it to promote you and don't you don't have to put your whole life out there. Just what you are comfortable with to promote yourself, to get your videos out there and everything. And I said, he said, you could put some like fun stuff in there, some stuff that's not drum related. It's all like what you're comfortable with mm-hmm. putting well, out there. First and foremost, what do you want to do? You want to play drums for the rest of your life. You want a career playing the drums. Absolutely. So how do you? So you're doing that. You're well on your way. Mm-hmm. Right. And and you know at age 23, when I was 23, I was uh, in radio, and we didn't have any of these tools. You mm. know, Rich can attest. It was all. You didn't know what you're doing. You're just. I just need to get out there. I, you you probably didn't even realize it was called networking back mm. then. You well, know, I, I remember when I moved to Nashville, my dad would always just tell me at night that it was 1997, and he was like, Rich, it's networking, it's networking, it's all networking. And he came from a business he background. He would just he'd drill it into my brain yeah. every single day. Are you meeting people, son? Are you meeting people, son? First two years in Nashville were rough. And it's funny, because you come here, networking, networking is a dirty word. It's, it's, it's more about, you know the new world, the word is, it's like collaborating. Right. That's the dirty word. Well, it, it, now now people know it's like people collaborate. Collaborating, you know. Yeah, I like the way you're saying that. Networking. That's why I'm, me- I'm just repeating it. Hey man, I'm a I'm a networker. I have no problem. I I have no problem being politely persistent in a room. And last night, I was visiting with two big bands from Texas. And you're doing it again with acting now. They all got my they all got my phone number. Yeah. All of us. Which, but you know, it's they're going to remember you. One of the things in the crash concept, because we, you and I went through and we came up with the silos of how you applied the different tenets of crash to your life and right. how you came mm. up with it. Um, a lot of the things that you talk about crash for the if those of you are not uh, um, familiar with it is commitment, relationships, attitude, skill, and hunger. It's a hell of a way to define how to go about building something it's an right. easy to remember roadmap for accomplishing anything you want in your life it really is it really is and uh, so with that being said yours started out with the hunger you were really hungry for something you wanted to be Tommy Lee you wanted to be the guy on MTV yeah right that hunger fed your desire to nurture your skills right right Okay, you had to get your skills up there. You had to learn how to read music. 
you had to your attitude i think you derived from your mother and all the books that she read she was huge tony robbins fan and motivational books right choose choose to be positive yeah choose to be positive. you could choose your attitude every day absolutely uh your relationships probably didn't start coming in i guess your hunger and your commitment were pretty symbiotic boom that was there the relationship piece was the hardest thing for me to get together because i grew up first in rural connecticut and then the you know the most west of texas Mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with the music business and And that's the funny thing with with sarah it's like you know i was going to ask you sarah for those you don't know she's in four bands yeah four bands you're juggling karate classes that you teach right yeah my taekwondo classes that i teach uh once or twice a week and she, li- and she lives in rural Connecticut, but right. she goes to the Mohican Sun. Anything that has anything to do with music in the state of Connecticut, she goes. Yeah. And yeah, that's part of your commitment. Right. Absolutely. You're hungry. Your ideal gig would be to do what Rich is doing. Absolutely. I, ever since... I have all the faith in the world that it will happen. Totally. Ever since I went happen. to that first drum camp and I got to see like what was going on and like how... Like the music industry was working, and I got like the insight on it, and all the different stuff that um, these all these drummers got to do, and just listening to their stories, and it was just like it's great. It and was everybody just, has a different path and, and, getting there. Absolutely. But can you imagine meeting the people she's meeting and doing the things that she's doing at her at age, twenty three? Well, no, I mean when I was at twenty three, I was playing bebop, jazz, fusion, and big band music at the University of North Texas. And I was driving into Dallas every night to play with horn bands and top 40 bands and smooth jazz bands. And I played uh, the, those big charismatic churches, you know, mm-hmm. on Wednesdays and Sundays. And I was teaching drum lessons. And believe it or not, I was also a newlywed. I was a married man at 23 years old. So juggling a lot of different things. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I just didn't know how I was going to get there. But I had so much desire and hunger that if you have the hunger and you have the desire and you have a commitment and you realize that you have to, that the relationships, those are your gatekeepers. That's your ticket to success. I had to find those people, you know. Yeah, you had to really I had to, it, yeah. I had to find them. For me in radio, mm-hmm. I, at age 23, <clears throat> I was at you know a radio station in Connecticut, the home of rock and roll, I-95. Oh, I know. We played the uh, the latest from Zeppelin, yeah, 38 Special, all the new stuff from those guys back that. in the late 90s. Yeah. But I was 23 years old getting in the radio, getting my... Uh, the new stuff from Zeppelin? It was, it's a joke. Oh, gotcha. Dude. I mean, oh, I am missing your you jokes really today. Are. You really are. You really bad. I don't have a drum. I don't have a drum with me to go, yap. <laughs> so I had to do the same thing. Even mm-hmm. though I was in rural Connecticut, I wanted to be Howard Stern's production guy. So in New York City was just a train ride away. Um, I was in a band called uh, Connecticut White Bread. Don't look it up. Oh, my gosh. gosh. Yeah, no kidding. It's bad. It was bad stuff. Was it like a white funk band? No. It was, it was ass rock. Ass rock? Ass rock. You mean shake that ass? No. Like we had a song called "What's Up Your Butt." Oh, nice. Yeah, filthy bitch. Stuff Damn. like that. It was bad. It huh. was, yeah. It oh, was, it was like a, it was. It was. It was. It was like. Um, it's like a parody band. A precursor to uh, Limp Bizkit in a Got, way. Gotcha. You know, it was like if Anthrax had a child with a really dirty whore. Yeah. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> My God. It was. You're funny. It was. There's things coming out of your face I just didn't expect to ever hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. It's okay. No worries. I'm only talking like this because you were talking like this before we went on the marathon. So anyway. Sarah, she's good. She's she's cool. She understands. This is a music business, man. Yeah. So radio. Yeah, thick skin. Radio, all I had were trade magazines. And I think a, a couple of websites at the time that were developing. But you got your job leads from these trade magazines. And I, about a year and a half, two years into it, I started putting this demo together. I had my demo tape. It was a 10-minute long demo tape, which is... That's very long. It's like suicide in the radio business. You don't do a demo tape that long. So I put it out there, and it was like me walking down a hallway and, you know, hi, I'm Jim McCarthy, a production director here at the home of rock and roll line. You know, it was awful. I should really put it out there. I would love to see it. Do it. it was, you would listen to it. So I'd burn off all these dubs every single night, mm-hmm. and I would have on, because I did a... a a radio show at night. I was the, the night guy. So I had a table about the size of this with packets laid out. 
and I would feed those packets every night with my demo tape and my resume and I had all my jobs that I wanted to apply for and shoot out and I finally got a job I think three and a half years into it that's what took me to Vegas and it, was, it wasn't even because of that stupid 10 minute demo I had I was finally just shortened it down to 60 seconds and it was good to go mm-hmm. and um, but you had to make those relationships somehow mm-hmm. you know I just didn't have the wherewithal to make the phone calls and the follow ups and have that creativity that you're doing with the social media aspect of it you know, especially with my background being in marketing, that's a tremendous tool for you. Mm. I mean, a lot of what you're getting into, I mean, like Rich, Alex Van Halen, Neil Peart for me when I, when I, when I was playing back actively, you're having interactions with people that people would have killed to have interactions with. Mm. Is that something that you realize? That, I, I do realize that, and I, uh, I'm very, very appreciative of all those opportunities that I've had because I know they're not like, not anybody can have those experiences and to be able to like you've seen them like in dvds or drumeo or whenever they have put their stuff on and you get this and you get to like meet them in person and get to ask them all those questions that you've been like well, how does he do this well what's his reasoning behind that and what like to be able to ask them that in person is an opportunity that not everybody gets so i always like whenever i get invited to like hey come hang come hang or if i get that opportunity i always take it because it's an experience a that not everybody gets but you also learn a lot because if you want to get into that industry and you put yourself into those moments and you get to see like through them and you get to like a day in the life of them like what they do in a night kind of makes you realize oh this this is going to be me like it, it's good to learn this stuff mm-hmm. but then when you're in the moment with them you can ask them the questions that you've always wanted to ask them and you get the answers and then you ask for advice and it's just great advice and I'm super appreciative of every opportunity that I get invited for and everything that I get to do because it's just, yeah. it's been incredible. All the stuff that I've done. I would have, if you would have told me that 11, almost 11 years ago when I started, even took up an interest in drumming, I would have said, you're crazy. So you've been playing for 11 years? Almost 11 years, yes. Oh my gosh. Nice. 11 years I was, yeah, I was, I was in radio. I'd given up on my drumming. <laughs> <laughs> I was, and it's funny because I was in, you know, bands in Connecticut. I mean, let's be honest, you're not exactly playing with the, the cream of the crop in Connecticut, right? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, you're probably surrounding yourself with the people that you need to be surrounding yourself in Connecticut, mm. but it's not so Nashville, like I, right? Right. It's, it's not Nashville, but you're putting your, like, you go to those open mics because then you get to see, like, like, you, you'll start playing with people, like, playing with different musicians, you know, like, man, this guy's good. Mm hmm. Like and it's always key to have that business card with you because you never know whatever situation you're stuck with and she's you don't, always got her business card. You cool. never know. Like they're like, hey, this guy's looking for a drummer. You but where did the business card thing come from? The business card thing from your camp. Oh, the first camp I ever went to, they're like, always have a, a business card and a firm handshake and look people in the eye. Look people in the eye and just mm-hmm. it'll get you. It'll get you places and it has gotten <laughs> like, me a like lot a of places. You're like a proud places. father listening to this right now. <laughs> Oh, man, this is great. Because, yeah, I mean, things are happening for, for Sarah. It's great. I've gotten a lot of, like, just by having that business card and having it in my back pocket, like, and handing them out, like, like I've gotten a lot of calls for, like, fill-in gigs, or I've gotten a call of, like, hey, like, an artist is, like, can you fill in a couple dates? Our drummer that we did do our little local, like, tour with can't make a couple shows. Can you fill in? Like, mm-hmm. or, like, if I'm ever, like, need... Like, I always I take all my business cards. You know how, you know, everybody gives you a business card. Mm-hmm. Like, a key example is if you go to NAM, it's like a really big convention out in California. And for musicians and merchandise and stuff, and everybody's giving out business cards. Yep. It's like overwhelming. But you're always going to remember that person because mm-hmm. you have that business card. I actually have a binder that I keep. With cards. And there are special business card slots like uh, mm-hmm. sleeves. And I keep a binder of them. So I'm like, man, who's that person? I can, like, flip back and look at it. Sometimes I have some of them on my phone, but, like, if I don't, like, need them, need them, like, if they're not, but, like, when it comes to mind and someone's like, hey, I'm looking for a company that can do this. I'm like, boom, I have the business card right here. So that's why I always, like, uh-huh. You know, always, it, and that's called building up your circle of influence. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Where you, you know, I know somebody. I'm, I'm going to connect you with them. Absolutely. You're becoming a connector, which is one of the best things you could be. 
you can be, I know somebody yeah yeah be an I principal man yeah so that's why you come into the meeting you coming this Wednesday better not because I gotta prep for that speech on Thursday Son of a I know we'll do it we'll do it so yeah and that's another thing you're probably not even aware that you're doing well and yeah. it's funny when you when you start identifying these little facets mm-hmm. and qualities and virtues that you're bringing to the table you're gonna be unstoppable and yeah. you start applying them because I mean you are getting up and you're playing with people and I see you playing with people uh, you, you know you, uh, you told the story with uh, Big and Rich you can tell yep. that story again you got up he invited you on the stage because he was like this girl's not missing a beat and you were like <clears throat> you know most people be able to go, you know would, oh, I don't know I would shy away from that opportunity. She, she was like, Mm-mm. John Rich invited you up the stage, and you were like, beelined it up there. I, I mean, because I've always been one of those people that's like, stick me in front of a crowd. I'm okay with it. I was the one that got like an A plus in public speaking in college. Like, <laughs> and then people would be like, Oh, I didn't get it. Where'd you get in the class? I'm like an A plus, and they're like. But where did that come from? Your parents instill that in you? Yes, they've. My parents, and also the martial arts, too, like, whenever we would go somewhere, like, my parents would always be like, oh, make sure, like, you introduce yourself, like, always, like, be polite, don't be shy, kind of, because if you're shy and you don't get yourself out there, then you're just, what was it? I said it in the other, when we did our other podcast, when, if you keep yourself, if you don't put yourself out there and you don't let somebody know you then you're not gonna nobody's gonna know about you unless you go out there and you do it shout shout if, it from a mountaintop and that, let the that world that would be a bomb yeah. drop if we were See, on Bradley's dude, show dude let yeah. the world know you exist the work is gonna go to somebody why not you yeah and of course you know you have to keep practicing and growing and working on your yep. craft your craft your craft has to be on point it's an expectation that you're gonna be killer at your craft and always have the goods mm. but when you follow it up with salesmanship networking the business card the follow-up the social media presence the new way of doing things in the new world you will be unstoppable if you don't say another thing is if you don't say anything you would ne- so like i would have never known if you weren't from connecticut if i hadn't for chad mentioned it or, or we mentioned we it. did talk about it before but we did talk about it before <laughs> but like if, if i had never like talk to you like or if i walk up i've always been one of those people that's just like super comfortable like stranger walks up to me and i like 20 minutes later i know all about this person actually i funny story is i was in nashville last year for your drum intensive Mm -hmm. and i don't know if you know this about me but i know sign language like and i'm kind of good at it i'm good at it why is this r and not x and this is x R. I don't know. R. Right? Yeah. So it's, this should be X, R. don't you think? But that's X. Yeah, X is that. Isn't that weird? That's Red Rum. <laughs> Red. You know what movie that's from? Oh, my God. Um, the Shining, Stanley Kubrick. Watch, and it's funny because you, it. you, you... Sarah is a... I'm, I've come to find out quite a... You're like a beast. I mean, you really are. You're basically... Uh, you got two different drum teachers and you take two different lessons every week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you one thing. Trade one of the drum teachers for sales education. Sales education? Sales education. Online university, something like that. Uh, Bradley has got something, and Brad, I'm going to put this out on here for you. It's a little bit of a plug. He's got It's called closerschool.com. And he's got all of his experience up on a virtual video platform, virtual training platform. You've been there. Mm-hmm. Um, look into that. I implore you because you got you've got the Absolute, DNA. Absolutely, You're I, I mean doing it. anything to help me to That's get better be the, at my craft. Absolutely, I'll do it. I don't know if she needs it. She's doing it naturally. She's already a natural sales. But to identify those traits and then hone them mm. is what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not I, don't don't drop I, what you're I doing. I mean, I no. see I see her I see her work a room, and she she can actually. She, but the thing I always talk about is when I sold cars, I always thought I was good at selling. Right. Right. I but always not closing. I, well, it was it was closing, but also applying a fundamental sales process, which is what I talk about and what I teach in my speeches and talks that I do. Right. I didn't realize that even existed. 
Until I always knew I was a good salesman, just like you know you're good at it too. But once you actually identify the individual points of a selling process, got you know, it. The meet and greet, okay. Rapport building, like what you're talking so about. So, like the step by step process to get to your final result. Is so, what is the it, end Jim? zone? What is it, Jim? Well, it's the meet and greet. So basically, anytime you get in front of somebody, how are you coming off? Again, eye contact, the intonation of your voice. Are you smiling while you're speaking, even if you pick up the phone? Uh, the, the grip of your handshake. Um, and then we've got two ears and one mouth. We always listen twice as much, much as we speak. Uh, you are a master, Rich, at uh, learning people's names. Mm-hmm. So and you always, you always talked about, you know, from the receptionist to the first and second engineer to the person who cleaned up you knew their name because mm-hmm. why i write i write that down immediately so if i go to a new recording session and i'm meeting new people immediately i write down the name of all the musicians on the floor that i'm recording mm-hmm. with it might be a new engineer and assistant engineer i'm working with that day and there's sometimes there's a new intern or a, res, or a receptionist at the front desk and um you know i've i've literally have seen interns and receptionists move on to like much better jobs in the industry where they're right. actually like lead engineers assistant engineers and uh, they they said man you always would remember my name and offer to go buy me a coffee because I would I'll go to a recording session and I would say like I'm, I didn't get my coffee this morning guys I really need an iced coffee and we, can you run to that cute little coffee shop up the store here's my debit card and pick and get yourself one too and they would always like be like what like, yeah, you know, just little things like that. I think make a difference. And and you know, look at I I have I have an aging brain. There's a lot of information in there, but I do do things to to, to give yourself a fighting chance of remembering someone's name. When you meet someone and you know you're going to be running into them again, put them in your iPhone under under um, their name, and then where you met them, when you met them, and through what person, because that's a key word. So if I see somebody at a nightclub that I haven't seen in three years, and they're doing this, and I and then I, I, I'm trying to put together. Where do I know them from? And then so I yeah. can maybe if I could put in a keyword. And you, you're human; you can't remember. I it. could put a keyword in my uh, uh, in my phone. Bass, Nashville. Alphabetically, all the bass. I know the person plays bass. Alphabetically, all the names of the people that play bass in Nashville or in my circle come up on my phone. They're like, "Oh yeah." That's Tony. I haven't seen him in three years, but we did that cool session together. And it's just give yourself a fighting chance. It's a tool. Yeah. You know, because the sweetest sound to someone's ears is the music of their name. That's right. Being uttered out of a human's little face. I'm going to yeah. piggyback off of that yeah. because I, Sarah, I'm going to piggyback off of that because I work at a martial arts school and I have new kids that come in all the time we have new, I have new students all the time when it's either work teaching martial arts or working the after school program in my martial arts school and we always get new student students and you have to it's always like learning their name I always associate like each one of my students like I have one cool fact about each one of them like something they've told me or something that they're interested in that's incredible and and it, you wrote that down no that's like Is Garth it, Brooks it, stuff it's, right it's like, something that you you just instinctively did I, like please take that course it's going to be like pouring gasoline on a fire. And then I'm when serious. you take it, share all the stuff t- with me. <laughs> you take it. It's, if, it's, it's like if it's Bradley, I think it's probably going to be like a five thousand dollars course. No, he he offered it like I don't know if it's still at this price, but it's like like under three hundred bucks. Okay. But he might. Yeah, I think nice. I think it's a thousand dollars course, but he discounted it for a while. Gotcha. But either way, I mean, it's good information. And again, until like I said, I knew I was good at selling until I started actually mm. going. Oh, oh. You mean I actually have to ask for the sale? Mm. And that's something where a lot of people, leading up to that point, and you're talking about the points, there are things that have to be done, right? You're in a creative industry. A lot of it's been commoditized. You're doing a great job of decommoditizing what you do because of your, your social media presence, the situations that seemingly come to you now. You put it out there, it's coming back to you. Um, and people see you in these situations. You're starting to become well known in your circle up in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They know Pete. You know, your skill set's good enough where people are coming to you to bring you on board. I mean, the same thing with me with voiceover. A lot of this kind of plays into the you know the cre- when it comes to being a creative. They don't see themselves as business people, right? It, it, you know, you did. You understood that intrinsically to the point where people that were your peers would kind of 
poke fun at you. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, you're, you, know, you, you came in, you were the loudest guy in the room. You had the most charisma, but people remembered you. Mm-hmm. And that's what got you where you are. You know? And that's a, that's a, it's a huge thing. One of the biggest things I took away from the car business was from a guy who says, the, 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 one of the, your biggest things you can do is let everybody know what it is that you do. You know, to the point where I would leave my card in the gas slot at the gas station, the credit card slot, so someone would actually physically take remove my card and look at it. Oh, I didn't. Wow. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's well, yeah, but you don't want some weird creep like hitting you up on your cell phone. Hey, man. I don't care if they're they, pumping they, some unleaded today. They need a car. Huh? I've worked with all types. Yeah. That's but yeah, that's what you had to do. Interesting. You know man. what I mean? Yeah. That those little nuances. <laughs> You tell her not to do. It. Don't do that. <laughs> Sarah's a female. You know, it's not. Smart. She's a fourth degree black belt female. Oh, I think she could take care go. of herself. Like, so, but so. yeah, no, that's what I like. Going back to what I was saying before, like each one of my, like, because I there's a lot of names. I have, I have the, like in our after school program, we have sixty kids, and in in my class alone wow. that I teach, I have another like thirty to forty. And you know all their names? All of them. Mm-hmm. I've either learned their. Or, like, they have, like, nicknames. So, like, mm-hmm. they'll be like, oh, my name is such and such. Spaz. But, hey, Spaz. But I have a nickname. Beardy. Come so, like, that's yeah. how I'll remember their name. Or, like, they'll tell me, like, like I observe, like, if we're sitting there and we're teaching class and this kid always talks about, like, if it's, like, a movie, like Star Wars, and they're just going on and on about it. I'm like, oh, this is such and such. His favorite thing is Star Wars. And it kind of, and they're like, oh, you know that? Like, kind of like a little something, a little something about each one of my students. And I think... To have that and just be like, hey, remember, your favorite color is the same color as mine. And they're like, oh, yeah, how did you know that? And it kind of just, like, it throws them off, but it lets them know that you care about them. And These are the too. things I had no idea about when I was 23 years old. None. I actually have to also give it to the martial arts because in the staff program, because they've taught me how to, like, <clears throat> firm handshake, introduce yourself, make yourself. So, like, if you're, you're teaching a group of children, you got to know each child's name. Because you have to, like, call their names out or whatnot. But Mm -hmm. also it's good, too, to introduce yourself to the parents, let them know who you are, like, and have, like, that. So I've been teaching for a long time, and I've had a lot of different students. And I actually just witnessed one of my first students get his black belt last year or the year before, and it was just, like, and now I'm, like, good friends with the parents, and it's just, like, it's, it's really cool to just... Not bad. See how they come along. Absolutely, and just to see, like, man. But, but I mean, you know, growth. going through all the traditional things that a girl goes through in high school, social life, boyfriends, any of that stuff, we were just kind of like, meh, I'm driven. I, I know what I want to do. I wasn't, I, like, had martial arts and drumming, two things on the brain, and there was nothing stopping it. Right. You I had was, mentioned bullying before. Yeah, I was, um... When I was in, I had a, my story's kind of interesting, but I jumped schools a lot in like seventh grade. I was in public school and it was just, it, that's where, where I turned to drumming because it kind of like took the, in the martial arts, I tied both of them in because it's, it was like that outlet I had to get me away from all, everything that had happened bad at school. And it was like that outlet that made me feel good. Yeah. It made me feel like, like, gave me that. Strong. It made me feel strong. And I just, then going to drum clinics and then just going. I went to Jim Riley's, which was the first one I ever went to. He's the drummer for Rascal Flats for all you people. The that drum know. dojo. The drum right? dojo. That's what it is? Yeah. Martial arts right there. Yeah. That tie. But he's not a uh, martial arts guy. I know, but he? it's like that. A lot of. There's, there's just something. There's just some weird serendipity in your life where there's always a martial arts tie-in. It, there's like, what do they call it, kismet. You know, there's there's like a little rue of stuff that reasoning that you were doing all this stuff and how I, it all I, ties. I, I mean, we work. I feel like a lot of this stuff is destiny. It's right. Like, it's like laid out for us, but we have to be smart smart enough to see the signals, and it, then it doesn't just. I don't think anybody lap. is. We have typically. to. We have to see the signals, and then we have to act and follow through yeah. and, and execute. Do you think you're inspiring people? Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, are. I've had a lot of people, like, I had somebody send me a video of their 18-month-old grandson who, like, 
is obsessed with watching my drum duty videos. That's like, awesome. That's why I do what I do. Or like I get a message like, hey, that advice you gave me was great. Like I was, there was this one guy who had reached out to me. He's like, I want to sit with you and like pick your brain about like what <laughs> all the stuff like how you got to do what you do i want to like see like kind of like a mentoring thing i've had like people come to me and then i see like and he'll i got a call he's like yeah i got the gig i'm in this band now we're traveling all over and it's just cool to see like how like some of the advice or like what i'm doing is influencing people and like it's like this is what i do what i do because yeah see at some point you're going to be able to stop saying yes to everything and be very selective about the opportunities that come your way. Yeah. At what point in your career, Rich, did you where you feel like you're able to stop saying yes <clears throat> to everything? I think it was maybe maybe five years ago, maybe like when I was like really? forty three or something like that. Really? I, I mean, I, I could have sworn it was probably at the time that you and I met, but I mean, you were still doing a ton of stuff at that. You know. I still like I, I have you know friends that tell me all the time, I and mean, Rich, you really should. You know, not be fat and happy, but 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 and and complacent. But like, do you really have to do as many things as you're doing? Can't you enjoy your life a little bit? I get bit? that too. I actually do get that too. But I mean, like, I don't. The last thing you're gonna see me do is go down and play on Lower Broadway, unless I've had a couple of cocktails. <laughs> you are beyond that. And I am gonna go like sit in with somebody just for like ha ha has. But it's like I don't have to do that. You know what I mean? Like I, I stopped doing that. You know, I mean, I stopped taking like you know the fifty dollar jobs and stuff. Now, right now in Los Angeles, I you know I have a little fusion band called Kawanga with some amazing players, and I'll I'll go play little wine bars, and I go do a lot of the the, the jam nights at the night at the whiskey and the Viper and the and the Lucky Strikes. I go to I go to do all those things because that's basically. Like it's community outreach, and it's 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 continuing to keep my brand in front of other people. And I go and I play different music with different people. So I go and I do that. You know, um, I don't know, do I have to? No, but I but I am trying to play more music in Los Angeles. So it's a great way to meet other Angelino musicians. Do you do any drum lessons at all? I mean, you teach a lot. I know that, but I mean, what continuing education, continuing education do you do for your craft? Um, do, do I do do I do I take drum lessons? Yeah. Oh, I should. I definitely should. I was listening to a podcast the other day with our friend uh, uh, Russ Miller, who's you know he's like always at Capitol Records recording with an orchestra, and you know he's always on some sort of a film score, everything from like Chicken Little to Resident Evil, and. Then he's the pit drummer at a lot of the award shows. And he's a guy that's like, well, I want to work on Afro-Cuban drumming, so I study with Cuban drummers. And I want to work on brushes, so I go to the best brush player. Like, he's always studying with someone. And I, 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 I'm I, into that. I kind of get that. But at the same time, I've replaced um, my creative development with other areas. Like I'm being creative yeah, in acting. other ways. Yeah. So like yeah. I'm. So I go to my acting classes, and then like I'm producing records now with with my mic and my new company, and that that's very inspiring. I don't want to. I don't want to say that I'm as good as I want to be, but I feel like I've found a niche and a groove and a flow in this thing that I'm known for, and I'm getting called for. I'm pretty happy with that. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. You know. And it's one of those things that you feel like you're still learning every day. I'm learning. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, I'm learning by just being in the trenches. You know what I mean? It's like no. I know that I got to go do sixty Jason Aldean shows this year, and I will. There, there will not be. Uh, there will never be an ungrateful performance. I will be centered. I will be. Uh, I will be present. I will be focused on delivering an exciting. You know, I could retire after that show, show every night. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I hold myself to that, that super high standard because that's the that's uh, that's the the gig and the outlet that allowed me that brought me some notoriety that has allowed me to do a million other things, creative ventures that people they that they give a shit because of that situation. They've seen me in that situation for fifteen years, right? You know what I mean? So I have to. That's got to be always rocking. Is that a pressure for you that you would all, whatever, everything that's going on in your life and all these opportunities? And it's kind of funny, the big and rich thing, 
You had somebody at the ready with a camera, phone camera. To, that to, was actually my mom. <laughs> yeah, Sarah's got like a like between her super supportive parents and our. She have we have our friend Tori, who's like kind of like her street team captain. Like Tori Dent McDonald. She's the first person to comment on every one of Sarah or my videos yeah. or posts or anything. She must have an alert. Can you set an alert on Facebook when somebody posts anything? She probably has your notifications turned on, so whenever you uh, go live, she gets notified. How does, is that a setting? Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I, dude. That's yeah. huge. I have it On notified. Instagram, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. you got to start, you know, in addition to all the other stuff you got to get people to do and follow you and like you and subscribe, yeah. turn on notifications so you get notified every time I'm, uh, I See, my notifications something. are... My posting notifications are off on Instagram, like, but I do get the... But the Grant Cardone is starting a live video. Like, yeah. I have that. That's turned on. Yeah. So that's always yep. on, but... Uh, but uh, but no, that she's a definitely like she's like a street turn street team. She's like your biggest mm. fan. Yeah. yeah, and it's saying you're you're doing using other avenues to get yourself in to different venues. Like, hey, while you're here, what if I set you up with this music store? Connecting, absolutely. Networking. And I'm trying to. I do it a lot too because I want to keep the drumming community in our state like alive clinics right. mm-hmm. how many like what can i do to keep our drama community like with all bringing in these clinicians and for educational stuff like feed them the knowledge keep mm. keep it going you don't want to burn that fire yeah the, mm-hmm. she was at the greg business clinic and greg said he's a great guy sarah come on up so nice yeah drum solo sarah, go come on up. he sounds like winnie the pooh he's got that yeah because he is winnie the pooh. he was he was winnie the pooh for yeah. a while yeah so but, um, I always, whenever there's a drummer that comes into town and they do clinics, I'm like, hey, we have this place, great place, it's a drum shop called the Woodshed, like, or I'll just like, hey, there's great little places in the state, or like, if I never thought, like, who was it, somebody, there was a couple of drummers that I've met, like, when I've gone to shows and I've talked to them, like, after the show or for backstage or whatnot, and they're like, man... I haven't done a clinic in forever, or I've never done one, I would like to do one, or like, man I do clinics I'm like really it's like well I have this great place here's my business card if you ever want to whenever you're in town and you want to do it hit me up what do they do when you hand them a business card they're like wow these are nice like, you got your stuff together you, you know it's really there's, I meet a lot of drummers who say like dude I want to do clinics man I'm like why have, do they I have not a story do about that just do it if you say you want to do it just do it why aren't you doing them well it's funny because back in the day Johnny Rab yeah. you know Johnny dude. great guy Dude, he sounds like he sounds like Charlie Sheen. Dude, man. Dude, man. Great so, voice. So great, great drummer. He was. It was so funny because at the time I knew the both of you. Mm-hmm. You know, you and I were really starting to get a good friendship going. He and I, uh, we did some video stuff together. He wanted a lot more of what you were doing, and you wanted a lot more of what he was doing. Well, it's always grass is greener. Yeah, like he wanted to be in a band, but you know, he he finally got his wish. He's collective playing, Soul. He, yeah. Collective playing those that playing those great hits. The yeah. Collective Soul catalog. Um, and he he kissed a lot of, you know he kissed a lot of toads. There was like some gigs that he did that he was not he didn't want to do. But yeah. you know it's good. And then he became the Roland, you know. Yeah, the sp- guy specialist, the one-handed roll guy, mm-hmm. freehand technique. But the thing is, is that in the one of the hardest businesses on earth that you're embarking in, in a world, in a world where the hardest business on earth is at your doorstep, knocking. Oh my god, <laughs> that's a real deal. That's my that's my buddy Phil's. Um, For those of you who aren't watching this, there's a there's a djembe, djembe. silent D. I was gonna say a conga drum next yeah. to me. It's not no, a that's conga. a real deal. With that's a real goat skin head. Yeah, with the fur on it. We can actually come up with beats with yeah. a Z. Yeah, beats. And go through beats. Yeah. So you're embarking into the hardest, probably one of the most difficult businesses in the world. mm Hmm. Everybody, it's like the voiceover industry, and it's at a. I gotta. I try to stray away from online uh, Facebook, you know, back and forths. But this one just really pissed me off. This guy just came on today, and then, you know, someone was asking about voiceover podcasts, and I put up, you know, hey, listen to Corey Disson. He's got a great podcast. He had me on. I think I connected you with him. Did you mm-hmm. ever talk to him? There's about five people that that you want me to do podcasts with that we have not. You just haven't had it. Made it. It'll, it'll happen. Yeah. So he does a podcast called the Go Get It Podcast. Uh, he also, and there's another guy uh, named Earl Hall, who in the voiceover community doesn't have the most stellar reputation. A lot of people see what he's doing, and for whatever reason, they think that he's a you know 
just a con artist comes up to get, and it's like I've met, I've talked to the guy, I've had him on my show, he's, I've been on his. He's a decent guy, All right? You know, he's just doing his thing. Yeah. And uh, this one guy is like, well, he's just a joke, and blah blah blah. And I'm going, dude, what's your deal, man? Yeah. You know, and uh, he, it was one of those things that it just kind of in in that industry where everybody, I think the numbers are something like. 20, it was like 10 million people in the United States alone identify themselves as a voice actor. Wow. Just right. one term. Ooh. Just one term. 10 a million lot. people. And there's probably thousands onboarding every month. You go down to the Guitar Center, you can literally pick yourself up a microphone, a digital I.O., and slap it all together, hang a shingle, put yourself on Fiverr, I'm a voiceover artist. Right. And make money. Sure. I have a, and some I, yeah. people that just have a lot of problems with that. But I'm like, that's the changing landscape, guys. Just like, you know, the gatekeepers have been removed from like what we were talking about. You mm-hmm. want to get a deal with DW or Sabian or Remo or any of these companies? Mm. Just go. Just find out who the person you need to talk to is. Hone your sales skills. Mm-hmm. Understand that it's more about them than it is about you. And what do we talk about? You know, when you find a problem, identify a problem of theirs that you can solve. Look, why would you go with me? Sure, I'm an unknown. Sure, I'm kind of, you know, but here's why you would. Here are the different things that I can point out that you should sign me at least as an artist deal because I need symbols. I'm playing out constantly up here in my pocket of my world. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was one of those things that you were like, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even, yeah. <clears throat> Look at all those brands right there. DW, Remo, Hanson, Fitzroy, <clears throat> Kickboard. So I mean, I probably have relationships with maybe like 30 manufacturers. Right. I sold myself to every one of those companies. Basically, mm-hmm. it was, I, I sold myself. I said, yeah. I said I'm But did you know that's what it was at the time? You knew you you all you intrinsically knew you had to get in front of somebody mm-hmm. and network. Your father said, you know, spread your seed. Mm-hmm. Had you had a formal sales identification of the process early on, where you'd have that aha moment. Oh, I get it now. This is how it works. That's what I'm talking. Yeah, about. I was just always like supernatural at like saying, "Hi, yeah, this is me. This but is what I'm to- doing." When you were introducing yourself, hey, call me if you need me, instead of saying that vague, well, call me if you need me, you know I'm available to do that. Hey, when can we sit down and talk about this a little bit more about some of the projects that you've done, uh, have coming up and some of the projects that I've done? When can we grab a coffee? When's that mini, that mini commitment? That's a lot of coffee. Oh, my God. I know. You've had a lot of coffee. So much coffee. But I mean, did you ever think, you know, hey, when can we get together? When can we sit down and talk? Kids today are pretty good at that. Like, I get hit up every day. When are we having coffee? And it's like, literally, the kids, like, when are we having coffee? Right. And it's like, oh, boy. Um, when are we going to have coffee and talk? Yeah. And that's, I, but I mean, that, but those, to know to ask that question right. is what I'm asking. Yeah. Did you, were you aware of that when you were coming up, when you were Sarah's age? You know, here's what I'm just giving. I'm 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 on a branding campaign right now. I'm handing out business cards, making you aware of me. Uh, it's not really transactional at this point. <clears throat> you know, the different relational and transactional selling. Mm-hmm. So relational is going out, handing out business cards, branding yourself. Transactional is actually going for what we call a trial close, going in and saying, "Hey, listen, when can we sit down and talk further?" And I could start putting the blinders on you. I think it was gonna, mostly relational for years. It is. Years. But I mean, in this day and age, you can really put, you know, the gasoline on the fire. Yeah. But it's understanding that, you know, and you may not get it, but at least ask the question. See, I had never, like, I had been, I've always been so focused on how can I get better that I never even really thought about endorsement deals or anything until I started getting offered some and I was just like... That's yeah. the next step. The endorsement thing is is interesting because I yeah you can be premature. Like I always tell people, like look at until you're with somewhat of a name act that's that's selling records and you're playing television shows and you're doing big shows, you might be jumping the gun. But you had Remo for how long? You've had it since Dallas, well, Texas. Yeah, but Remo really believed in me because at the time I was in the one o'clock lab band which is the best collegiate jazz band in the world right and so they were like uh this kid is in the one o'clock lab band he's playing with all these cool bands all over dallas texas 
I mean, most likely he's going to end up in New York, LA, or Nashville. Let's get on. Let's get in early with him. And it started. To, it was like a. It was like a. Like a cost deal. They could see you where. Yeah, but I mean, still, it was then, familiarity with the brand mm-hmm. and the people and the players that were involved. Mm-hmm. What no you, reason. What you shouldn't do, Sarah, is go is just start taking the free stuff from like crappy stick companies that you really don't want to <clears> use. <throat> like hold off until you can get with a Promark or a Vic Firth or something like. That. Have your standards. Yeah. Yeah. I could understand that. I can see that. I've seen that happen. I've actually seen it with certain drummers uh, over time. They they take the uh, less than spectacular equipment deals or drum deals. See, I didn't do that. Yeah. See, I knew like I know like what deal like what companies I want, and I'm just like all these. I'm like when the time's right, and I'm it's right. Bam. That's it. What do you want to accomplish in the next two years? Next two years, I just want to be. I'm just. Keep gigs coming in. Fifth degree black belt. How many gigs? What do you want to do? Got to put specific specific goals. By the time you're thirty, what do you want to be doing? He's got you against the wall today, Sarah. Something to think about for sure. Yeah. It is something because you're twenty. It's like that five year plan. You're twenty. It is. You're twenty. It's like a five year plan. You're twenty three right now, and you're going to be like thirty three, like really fast. Like that. Boom. Yep. And then before you know it, you're almost. 50 and you're like looking at 50 and you're and like I'm already planning my 50th birthday party it is gonna be epic there's gonna be fire trucks I mean there when's uh when are you gonna have her up on stage playing uh, hick down and stuff what's I don't know yeah, I, she's, you know <laughs> speaking mo- of putting people on most the spot. likely she's will probably come drop by one of the sound checks and we'll rock out on something you know so but basically you haven't you never th- give it much thought as far as what you want to be doing specifically well, one of my, I've always, like, when I, I made, like, a five-year plan five years ago, mm-hmm. and I kind of, like, put that forward, like, all right, and, like, I've seen where, th- like, it's take, things have taken a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, and I'm like, oh, well, another, f- it's been five years since five I Five years to you is, like, a lifetime right now, right? Right. Eight, five years ago, you were 18. Mm. It seems like a long time ago. Yeah. It's not... It's like, bam, it happened, the right? Five. five. Five years ago. Five years is like 1,500 days, something like that, right? Uh, Something like that. Yeah. What did I do? A run out of, uh, there we go. Okay, never mind. Um, but I mean, you know, that's another thing I talk about. To somebody in their 20s, five years is a lifetime. It's just, It just feels like it's, you know, oh my gosh, 28? It seems a long way off, doesn't it? It's going to be here before you know it, mm. right? Everything comes super quick. It really does. And life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end, the faster it goes. It really is. Really? Mm. Nice. Thank oh, you. my God. Life is like a box of chocolates. It's a roll of toilet paper. It yeah. goes faster the more it comes off the roll. I mean, it, it seems like it goes that much faster. I didn't yeah. know that. I s- or does it just feel like that? I, did it not feel like it? Think about how long we've been, we've been friends. Ten years. Here's the deal. Do you like... Some people like super thin toilet paper, and they just like to use a lot of it. But I, still, I use, it's the same effect. I know, I got you. Or do you like the really thick stuff? Where did, we need a snare drum and a cymbal. Okay. People are just wondering, why is that sound going on? Why is this thing going to run? And should we... Are you getting... Do you want to, you want to stop now? No, no. Are you done? No, I'm just we, we can wrap it up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, is that something that you think about? That like... No, I'm just... Well, I've never really thought like what I'm going to do when I'm 30 or what like I've always been like like new year like this is what I want to accomplish by like this so I go like year by year right. but like I set a goal like I want to be doing this by the end of the year mm-hmm. I want to have accomplished this I want to be okay what's profic- your 2019 goal then so my 2019 goal was to be in more than two bands and I've accomplished that I'm like I was like I want to double the amount of bands that I'm in and I now what's that. the reason that you want to be just through the experience or you want to make a, the cash that comes along Both. with it yeah because up in Connecticut when you're doing covers and things of that nature it pays pretty good Probably. it pays much better yeah. than mm. around here see I always say when like I always I do it year by year because I I do it like for the year because then it gives me something to focus on and sometimes those goals, like, lead up to a, an ult- – like, when I did my five-year plan, I came up with a plan the first year. And then I'm like, all right, I did that, so what can I do to make that even better and even better? And then when I hit the five years, I'm like, oh, I 
I did good. I did good. Yeah. And building that skill even more than what I thought I wanted to be. Mm. So I usually, but yeah, no, just like the year, like, hey, like I want to be in more than two bands. I did it. Yeah. Then it's, it's like, all right. February. It's only February. Yeah. Right. Now what? Then, all right, I accomplished that goal. Now I want to put myself out there as like more of like a fill-in drummer. So now I can like do my four bands and like put myself out there. Hey, I'm in these four bands, but I also fill in for bands whenever needed. What about recording and stuff like that? See, that's something that's like not really common up by us. It's more like it. But you got it coming down here. That's what you're going to have to do to survive. Right. Because so, I mean, you're going to be a, you know, you're you're becoming like I was in, in Connecticut in the radio business. I became a very large fish in a small pond. Mm-hmm. Mm. Then I went out to Vegas. And all of a sudden, I was working with all these people that I read about in trade magazines. Mm. And I became that really small fish in an ocean. See, I would have liked to see the, se- like the session stuff. Now, that makes me think, really think now. I'm like, man, I should go like sit, like sit in on a session. See what yeah. it's like. Sure. Just to you know get how to read that, music and all that stuff? And I know how to read sheet music and yeah. chart. Nice. That's a big part of it, right? Reading is awesome. That's just right. maybe maybe just finding somebody who's doing a session, like maybe in Boston or something like that. Just maybe just sitting in and just like taking notes. There's I, studios around Hartford you can go to. They're in New York or City. I could do that too, or New York yeah. City. Just like put myself, Probably maybe it's maybe that's something. To come see a session, though. Mm, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's something I need to put myself in more now I've so been by the so end of focused. 2019 let's just do, let's just put it out there right now okay your first recording session by the end of the year sure we can make that happen we can make it happen come on um, fist bump boom between all the drummers you know and you could like go crash their sessions and like be a fly on the wall you know and like if I was doing more traditional recording sessions like in commercial studios like um, like 90% of my work now is working uh, with um, you know Mike my buddy Mike at his studio his drums are set up all ready to go DW sent us a bunch of new hardware he's got a beautiful drum set Sabian line, sent me my whole setup so literally the only thing I have to do is just drive to Mike's and the, the drum my drums all ready are to go completely set up mm-hmm. and we are rocking jump in and go yep. jump in and go and we and 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 I make more money playing drums on things that I am producing. You know. Yeah. And that's that's wisdom you're going to impart to Sarah. And by the time she's 30, she's probably going to be like, yeah. she'll, 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 she'll own a record label by then. Yeah, and who knows what, what the recording scene is going to hey, be like in five years. own a record label by the time you're 30. How about uh, that? Uh, what do you think? That's a good goal. Yeah. That is a good goal. Because, I mean, the thing is, is that how much have your ideals changed since you were 23? My ideals? Oh, yeah. A lot has changed. Yeah. Yeah, two divorces. But why do you got to bring that in? Why do you got to be negative? I just we got to marinate our minds in good stuff. I, I know, I know. Hey, I'm. Smiling. But you know what? It's actually I'm, it's, I'm smiling it's, about it. <laughs> it's it's good stuff to go through because it shapes you. Yeah, it gets you uncomfortable. Songs that shaped me. I'm going to do that. Songs that sha- that should be another book. Songs that shape me. It's going to be all. It's going to be all covers of songs that I loved as a child. You for on YouTube. I just I'm short on time. I've got a lot millions. Everybody I is, do, but everybody. Everyone, but I mean, you know, if all these people can build huge empires, mm-hmm. they got the same amount of time everyone March, else. Has. April. I'm booked almost every day until like uh, May first. That's not a bad problem to have. No, it's fantastic. It's like my I am my time is accounted for. If you can go back to your 23 year old self, what would you tell him? <sighs> would I do anything differently? I mean, I, I mean, I think I would still be on the same path, you know, playing drums. But I mean, but understanding you wouldn't impart anything. I wouldn't have gotten married at 23. <clears throat> 23. Right. You know, and find out this guy Jim McCarthy. No, I'm sooner yeah. than later. I think Sarah's like she's all set up for success. He has no bad habits. Right. No sm- no sm- smoking. No she doesn't drinking. Swear. She's not an ass rock. Really, business. I've never ever heard you swear. It's incredible. You know Can who you else swear doesn't right swear? Now? Can you say something bad? No. You know who else said, said it never says anything bad? Who? Uh, John Hall. My buddy John Hall. Isn't that crazy? Oh shucks. Really? Oh yes. Oh freaking fudge. <laughs> Gosh, darling. I mean, I love him to death. Oh my god! Golly gee That's whiz! Some incredible control. I think the because I have stuff that comes out of my face that is just bad. So some like if there was ever a moment where I've ever swore on somebody. It's either if I've stubbed my toe or I've fallen and dropped everything that I like organized perfectly. That's like that's what I'm like, and it's just like whoa. Let me what? 
Sarah's family takes me to Aruba, man. I, mean, I know. And it's like crazy. She's got such a crazy great family. So, mm. so, so we're nice. all going to Aruba next time. We'll do the podcast. Yeah, down there. Let's you. go in November. Yeah. yeah. And they, and her mom makes an amazing um, make room for five pistachio more. Cake. Make room for five more, and yeah. the kids too. The kids, yeah. Bring all the kids. Pistachio. Rich, cake. Rich, uh, will we'll hang out with the kids. He's uh, he's a big kid guy. I love kids. He loves kids. I love working. He was with actually kids willing too. to uh, watch my daughter when my son was born. I called him up and I said, "Hey, I think we were like a couple of years into knowing each other, and uh, I do these things from time to time just to get a rise out of people." So I call him up. I said, hey, uh, you know, Courtney's scheduled to have our son in, in early May. What's your availability to watch Cammie? And, 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 and like on the phone, I could hear. A, uh, uh, I didn't jump on it right away. No, you were, you were completely like, is he really asking me this? Is he serious? And I go, dude, I'm totally joking. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. And you were like, well, I was trying to think of what my schedule would be. <laughs> I really was trying to think like what it would be like if I could if I could have done it. Change a diaper. Yeah, have you never, changed? I have never changed a diaper. You haven't lived. Have you ever changed? You you've de- you babysat. You've changed diapers. Yeah, that's a big part of your life. Mm. You did that since you were how old? Twelve years old. Sixteen. Sixteen babysitting. Yeah. I'm trying to get my daughter into that. It's a Didn't lot of fun. Make that side cash, bud. That's right. I tell her all the time. I said, if I'm the one standing in your way from getting what you, she wants to get a, 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 a set of earbuds, earbuds, Air, AirPods. Air, AirPods, and she's like, Dad, they're only hundred and eighty dollars. I'm like, Yeah, you got it. No, well, how are you going to get it? See, I was one of those people that was like, What can I do to Thank get you. that money? AirPods are hundred eighty bucks. Hundred eighty yeah. bucks. You know, I always had a paper route. I shoveled snow and I raked leaves. I See, I always had. I was always a hustler. I my o- parent, my mom always says, "You're a hustler, son. You're such." Yeah. A- See, so when I'm not doing all like like gigging and working my after school program job, like I make blankets. I do like craft stuff. She like made I me make- a blanket and my mom a blanket. Yeah, so that's what I do, and I have like my own little side thing. I did. I do like craft fairs, and I make them for people, like for gifts, or I do them. Just and I sell them like a lot of people like inquire about them, but I also like what can I do? Like, I was interested in getting some, I forgot what it was, it was drum equipment related. I'm like, what can I do to get that money to do it? Dude, your entrepreneurial DNA is off the charts. You're doing stuff that you know most kids wouldn't dream of or even think to do it, or like what you just can need I, that guidance, or like what can I go? Well, oh, no, I remember. <clears throat> I wanted a new gigging kit because my other gigging kit was kind of getting all worn out and the legs were starting to and they're like, there's no replacement for it. I'm like, well, maybe it's time to think about like, I need to save some money up for like a nice kit. And I went through, like, I went through my drum room and I said, that's first is first. What can I get rid of and sell that I haven't used in more than a year? Like, what can I do? Like, can I shovel my neighbor's driveway, make some money there? What can I do for baby? Like, I did everything I could and sold stuff that I had to sell, and I got the... You figured out how to get there. I tell my daughter, I said, take me out of the equation. Instead of having to go through me, figure out how you can get to those AirPod, AirPods. AirPods? AirPods. AirPods. Okay. Figure it out. Yeah. All right? It sounds like work. Get yeah. Your, get your kids into acting, and then you could be like one of those showbiz parents and keep all their money. If if that's one of the things, I mean, the thing is, is that they're looking at all the influencers and they watch all the people on YouTube and things of mm. that nature right now. If another thing to consider is coaching kids that are in my daughter's age range, because one thing about being a parent, I can't tell her anything. Like you probably, re- we all remember being, you know, our parents couldn't tell us anything. Nope. You know, we didn't realize how their wisdom until it's too late. I can't tell my wife that she's beautiful, even though I do. But it takes the she, dude. She doesn't, take, bl- she doesn't believe you. I said, you know, you have to say that. But it takes the guy who actually, you know, asks her out for coffee in the grocery store where she gets befuddled. Did that happen? All the time. Nice. They don't see a ring? They don't care. They ask anyway. Dudes are jerks. Telling you. What? They ask her out, Courtney, out for coffee? I'll kill them. Does that bother you? Let's send her to go out. Shut up! The sick Sarah on <laughs> you. But I mean, if you, I would like hire you to sit down and coach my daughter and be like, look, dude. That's, that's you want, awesome. You want these things out of life? I'll do it. Right. I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely go over there and just tell her if you you're want like, If you want to get something. You're Italian, you want, right? Yes. You can do the three-finger point. 
Sonny had five fingers, but he only used three. Just remind me, you got the, I got that nice bottle of whiskey over at your place. I got to come over and grab that 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 scotch. That was a gift. And I brought we got to make it happen. I know. We got, you, I got to go over there and do the fire thing. Man. We got to do the fire thing whenever you don't have like 800 other things to do in a day's time. So bad. So bad. But yeah, no. I've I've actually had a lot of parents who are like, hey, like, what you gonna talk Johnny, about? Johnny's like really struggling with something right now. I've tried explaining it to him a million times. I know that you're really good at what you like, like martial arts related or drum related. Like, can you give him like some advice? Like, he hasn't been really practicing a lot lately. Like, I've tried everything. What can you do to like? Tell you what, I only charge twenty five dollars for a half an hour. I'll sit down and coach him. There's another revenue stream for you. You're oh, welcome. Gosh. Oh man, everything getting thrown at me today. I'm telling you, I n- never thought of half this stuff. Just you throwing it. I mean, it's great. I mean, it's one of those things that I would actually offer it. Hey, I'll sit down and do it. And, right. What's that? Oh, credit square credit, reader. Uh, oh, square reader. I thought you were doing the actual like when you actually put oh, the yeah. credit card credit down. And, <laughs> in the seventies. Oh my god, we're old. Dang. Right. Right. I would totally. You know, next time she's like. Nah, 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 nah. I mean, can I get? I know somebody. Who I know what you can do. I, you can Skype her or FaceTime her or put totally her on, put her on the thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you my cell phone number. Ever mm-hmm. in that moment here, coach for kids. But uh, there's some legal ramifications there. When anytime you're giving advice or something, well, you gotta be a buzzkill, man. I'm just saying, she'd have to get. She'd have to become like a. No, she wouldn't. And a, a an a judge or a, what do you call it? A, a um. Or you can marry people. What is that? A or, reverend? Or, ordained minister. Yeah. There you go. I might right. do it. It's 50 bucks. You going to marry people? I I was thinking about marrying people and charging a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> I was it's thinking, like, I was it's like being that married as, by as Elvis, but you're married by rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rich. There's so many people sent hundreds of names for the show. For the, yeah, I know. It's the Rich Redmond show. I thought we settled one on, on, on one. I was like, are you, dude, really? Crash with Rich. Let's just go with that one. Crash with Rich. You know, I, you know, I, ran, it, I ran it by some other people. And they're like, crashing? Like, was it, it kind of sounds negative. You're crashing. You're crashing. Crashing. They're not really sleeping over at the studio. Like, they're not going to crash with you. Um, we'll see. What do you like better for my, for my new... Get, show. get rich. Is it you know? Is, is I like it, that. Do you like Crash? With so what was the other option? Crash with Rich, starring the Rich, the rich Redmond the rich show. Redmond show, starring Rich Redmond. I think it has a nice little ring to it. It's the Rich Redmond show, starring Rich and I had a conversation, and I, you know, bestowed upon him my immense wisdom about you know naming a show, and I said Crash with Rich, and incorporate the Crash moniker that you own into the name of the show. Yeah. We'll see. You get that meeting with Brian, and you guys can, you know, pick, you know. Uh, is, but you got to create. I sent you those photos, those new photos of yeah. me with the with the with the beard and all that, with the white hair. And then we're we'll, we just need to create a show. Intro, I wonder if you intro. could combine both of the ideas that you have. So, like the Rich Redmond show, where we sit and we and the, the we have the the. the I think we're probably overthinking it at this point. Totally, just got to go with one or the other. It's, totally. it's a friggin'. I mean. I like them both. Mm-hmm. I think if there's a way you can ultimately combine He's thinking like both. the Jimmy Kimmel show and stuff like that. I'm like, just thinking like, of putting myself in that same level. Just like, here we go. That's, this is what it is. I'm Rich Redman. I'm star- it's the Rich Redman show. It's Rich right. Redman. Absolutely. So you have like the talk. And we would always bring up Crash during the course of the thing. We would, always, we would be talking about all things music, motivation, and success. And the Crash thing would always come Brought up. to you by Crash. Yeah. The book. Yeah best-selling book on Amazon. I would sure love for it to be a bestseller. It's coming out, folks. That's right. Talk a little bit I'm about that. It. Let's wrap it up. We're still going on an hour and 20 minutes. I know. It's oh, crazy. Wow. Yeah, so the like uh, the book is finally coming out, and it's basically, uh, it's called Crash Course for Success, Five Ways to Supercharge Your Personal and Professional Life, and it's uh, basically, I talk about how Crash can help you in your life for any age group, any career path, anything you want to accomplish in your life, and it's actually somewhat of a biopic. Uh, there's some biopic elements in it, and um, you know I I, I I co-wrote it with a guy named Paul Deepan, who, who Jim connected me with, connected. and 
There's some very nice uh, photos in there. That's right. It's going to be really, really good. It's going to be an ebook, and it'll also be a print on demand. So when I go to speak to your your uh, you know meeting planners association or your corporate function, we could print uh, you know three hundred books for you for your That's attendees right. to take with them. And then I'm also going to do, of course, a book on tape audio version that I'll probably record over at uh, you know my buddy Mikey's house. We're really excited about it. Right on, Sarah. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Facebook, Sarah, S-A-R-R-A, Cardile, C-A-R-D-I-L-E. Um, you can find me on Instagram, it's drummaniac21, D-R-U-M-M-A-I-N-I-C-21. And then I also have a YouTube channel where I post videos as daily as I possibly can, and it's just Sarah Cardile. Yeah, those are my three... We're probably going to see Sarah on Shark Tank one day. Not as like the person going for the deal, but as the person handing out the cash. I would love that. Can it's I it's totally. I would love that. By the time you're 35, you'd be a freaking beast. She's a beast be right awesome. now. She is. She is a beast. Yeah. Beast mode. Thank you guys. Hey, for being, thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank again. you. Thank you for having me. And of course, uh, anybody want to get connected with these guys? Everything's down in the description portion of wherever you are listening or watching to this particular podcast thank you to big.lighting.com make sure you check them out as well they're also linked down below please link uh, like subscribe rate all that good stuff to the jmbo weekly primer if you have a guest suggestion or if you have any questions for me please reach out jim mccarthy voiceovers.com is my website you can always uh, subscribe and listen there to jim mccarthy voiceovers.com forward slash podcast and thank you guys again for being on. We'll uh, chat soon. Yes, absolutely. Thanks. This is the JMVO Weekly Primer. Please subscribe, rate, and comment via JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com forward slash podcast.